We're back inside theCUBE. This is day two. Uh, this is SiliconANGLE's uh, coverage uh, of big data. We've been covering big data since the original Hadoop world, uh, going back three years when my relationship with Cloudera and Amr uh, was uh, formalized with me getting some space over there. And I had a great pleasure to uh, get to know Eli Collins, who's our next guest. I'm joined with Jeff Kelly, my co-host. And Eli Collins is the, uh, I don't know what title you are, like employee number seven, uh, I work on the platform team. Platform I'm one of the, the leads uh, that, that builds CDH. You had my first video I did with Cloudera in the back of the office with the little bulbs from Ikea. <laughs> it might even still be on the website. They're talking about when the recruiting video. You guys have now grown massively. Um, you've been there from the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, congratulations. Uh, thank you. Um, so we've been talking about Hortonworks um, and Cloudera in context to Apache mm -hmm. and, and, and clearing that up. Uh, this week we've also been talking about analytics because that's a big rage in the marketplace in terms of the business value. But the marketplace is really exploding both on the infrastructure side as well as the business side with analytics and the use mm -hmm. cases. So um, the first question is I want to talk to you about is all the rage about high availability mm -hmm. because of Hortonworks data platform is out there. You guys announced CDH4, you were part mm -hmm. of that release. Talk about why high availability is so important mm -hmm. and when you guys uh, started working on that problem in your shipping code CDH4. Yeah, we've been working on high availability uh, for over a year now. So uh, in terms of why it's important uh, for customers, some businesses just have uh, strict guidelines in terms of the availability requirements for their software. So if you want to go into production uh, with a given workload, you have to have a high availability story. Um, the, uh, so there's um, just kind of the uh, basic enterprise feature set uh, that you know, customers expect. The other thing with high availability is more and more people are using Hadoop less as in batch mode and more in real time uh, application serving environments. And in those environments, you really need high availability because downtime means your app it could mean is down, means your user facing uh, site may be down. Um, so high availability is really critical as Hadoop expands into these um, uh, use cases that are really more low latency than what it's been used for in the past. Um, and so we've been primarily working on HDFS high availability since all, this, all the pieces of the Hadoop stack uh, depend on HDFS, it's kind of the linchpin of the system and being able to make sure your data is highly available so that the rest of the stack can always get to it has been really the focus of, uh, of our effort. Um, so we've been working on upstream Hadoop at Apache to make Hadoop highly available. Um, and that's what's uh, shipped in CDH4. What are the big component areas that are, that are most in demand right now? Is it the, on the workflow engine? Is it the MapReduce? Is it the HBase? Mm -hmm. What are you seeing within the framework? You know, we're seeing really high attach rates. Obviously everyone is using Hadoop itself, HDFS, the core, and MapReduce. Uh, we're seeing really high attach rates of all the analytics frameworks, obviously PIG and Hive. HBase has really taken off. We, you were at HBaseCon yeah, and saw how, how much activity and you know, uptick was there. It's, that's going to be that's going to be huge. So HBase has been, uh, I think, one of the strongest areas of growth in the in the platform. We see, um, I would say, I think 70, 80 percent of our users are all using Q, which is a, a end user interface uh, project on Hadoop that makes it more accessible. Um, Scoop and Flume are the two key projects for data ingest in Hadoop. So getting your data from a relational database or an EDW uh, into Hadoop and Flume for getting structured, uh, for getting log data into Hadoop. So both of those have been, uh, have just continued to grow uh, quite a bit too. As you know, Hadoop is always co-located again, you know, with existing systems and um, making, uh, you know, the more we can connect to those existing systems, the, the bigger adoption you get with Hadoop, and so it just snowballs. Mm -hmm. Why is HBase, I mean, HBase, we were well documented at HBase.com, it's exciting to be there, thanks to you guys supporting us, and, and I just want to say for the folks out there watching, uh, Cloudera's been a real big underwriter, supporter of our, mi our mission to be independent coverage, and I uh, want to thank them for that, they've always been a big supporter of SiliconANGLE. Um, but HBase, I mean, just insane adoption, yeah. excitement. Why, why is HBase so, because it's so integrated on, it was HDFS and MapReduce or? Um, yeah, part of it is that it's a new, uh, it's a new piece of infrastructure that there's not a lot of existing technology that solves that problem. So if you want a high performance scale out uh, database, 
you know, so far people, you know, they'd hack, hack together a bunch of MySQL databases, you know, hire some really bright people to figure out how to stitch them together, come up with something that really only works in their environment that you can't productize and stamp out. And so the, um, the spread of that type of technology was limited by purely by um, everyone having to go and kind of build a big Uber database by stitching together a lot of other databases. Uh, HBase um, kind of as a product solves that problem. So rather than trying to stitch together your own solution, you can just start with a scale out uh, database. So that, that's one is one piece. The other is that it's uh, highly integrated with the Hadoop stack. So if you already have a lot of your data in Hadoop and you want to do low latency um, uh, use cases with it, HBase is the obvious solution because it's integrated. It already runs on HDFS, it's integrated with you know, MapReduce and Hive and the rest of the stack. So those are the two, I think those are the two driving threads. So what are, what are some of the examples of those low latency applications that, that people can now do mm -hmm. between a combination between HBase and now having the confidence mm -hmm. and high availability? What, what kind of what use cases specifically are you seeing does that open up now mm -hmm. that, are, that are possible? Um, it, really a ton. I mean, HBase is, is a database mm -hmm. and uh, it's a key value store, so it's way more low level. I mean, you can even really think of it more as a storage engine mm -hmm. uh, than a database. Um, so for example, it doesn't have a SQL interface. Um, so really any, any uh, so for example, we see lots of people writing applications that are uh, you know, being hit by smartphones or web mm -hmm. backends, uh, and they're using it as a primary data store uh, for those applications. So you get you know, big people like Facebook Messages where they've architected all of, all of it on top of HBase. Mm -hmm. But even uh, smaller scale applications where so you're doing uh, you know, fraud detection or storing um, uh, you know, uh, binary objects like uh, images uh, of checks that you want to do uh, you know, uh, do retrieval on. Mm -hmm. um, people who want to have uh, pieces of smaller content that's not that HDFS is not well designed for have been using HBase as an alternative. So if I have a bunch of three megabyte objects that I want to store and get back, HBase is a great um, system for that. Mm -hmm. So it's, you can really think of it as a storage engine. So it opens up a lot of. Uh, you know, any anything can basically run on a storage mm -hmm. engine. So, right, do you think this really opens up the you know the, the floodgates when it comes to building big data applications? Uh, yes. You know, your CEO Mike Olson has talked about how we need to see more investment in the application layer. Yep. Um, why do you think we haven't seen a lot of as much activity, perhaps as we had hoped, by this point in mm -hmm. the in the evolution of Hadoop? And what's it going to take? Is it is it is it what we've just been talking about? H base and high availability. Yeah. Uh, what are some of the keys to really? kicking off a, a real kind of a flood of uh, big data applications, because really that's where the value ends up coming from yeah. uh, in, in the end result. It's a, that's a great question. So there's, uh, I think it's, it's a question of use cases. So right now if you look at, say, people doing advanced analytics or data pipelines, they're really treating Hadoop um, like a data warehouse or mm -hmm. uh, ETL tool and right. whatnot. And so people typically don't write, you know, there's way, way more applications written on Oracle than there is Teradata, for example. So for that use case, it's not a use case where you see thousands and thousands mm -hmm. of people writing apps against it. That I do believe that is the future of Hadoop, though, and HBase is a great example of that, where mm -hmm. if you stand up an HBase, there really will be thousands of applications written against HBase. Um, but if you're doing pig and hive analytics, you know, you're stopping with the analysts. There's no, you know, you're not going to see programs generating hive queries. You're, you see analysts writing or reporting tools generating mm -hmm. hive queries. And so that that's just not a use case where you have, you know, a huge application developer um, world. That, but that's coming. There's definitely, I think HBase is going to be one of the key components that unlocks that. And mm -hmm. that'll be the, you know, people writing the next generation of applications that don't want to use traditional data stores that want to have access to your big data. Mm -hmm. Those will be the people that, um, uh, that really kind of make that world blossom. But so far, I don't think that's where the Hadoop technology has been focused kind of pre -age phase. Mm -hmm. Couple, couple questions. One is I want you to share with the folks out there, because you've been in, the, in this industry now, you guys have built, uh, helped build this now, I'm calling an industry, like the PC revolution created an industry. I think you guys have creating a whole nother industry, not just an extension of, of the cloud or data mm -hmm. center. Um, share with the folks the vibe. You've been through a bunch of these. Um, yeah. This show's a technical show. Talk about what's it like here. What, what's the top conversations that you're seeing um, happen and the conversations you like yeah. here? You so said the vibe is really, uh, it's, it's one of a platform shift. So I think one of the exciting things about this industry is that every decade or every 15 years, there's one of these big platform shifts and everyone can kind of feel it coming. Like you start to feel <laughs> the ground shake and you know, three years ago, so, you know, so many people felt the ground shake, and now, yeah. you know, a year later, you know, you can, can actually graph like Hadoop Summit and Hadoop World attendance as kind of the richer <laughs> scale of, uh, of of the ecosystem. And so then now, I think the richer scale, of the ground's really shaking. Like you can really see that uh, um, it's no longer, you know, five percent of the people in this ecosystem believe that this is going to take over the world of data management. It's pretty much anyone you talk to here, you know. Mm -hmm. And as more and more people come and get kind of. Uh, inculcated in this world, and they get you see more people kind of adopt that mindset. So I think I think the 
the big thing I see is just uh, that platform shift is is happening and it's getting bigger and you can see um, you can see it as you get more you know now we're past 2,000 people next year I'm sure we'll be past 3,000 hey. people and people are starting to take this stuff for granted so they're having the more interesting conversations well of course you should write a whole application <laughs> ecosystem and your question is a great example of that of course you write a whole application ecosystem against this stuff not oh is this a viable technology <laughs> will the right. rest of the world use it so the questions themselves also yeah. change mm -hmm. people are taking it I think I think for Jeffrey granted. Moore you know talking about crossing the chasm you guys have already crossed the chasm uh, in, a, in a big way and that the market now has to kind of follow you guys and Hortonworks is leading the charge and trying to pedal as fast as they can to do that, uh, which is great. Um, my question, also question is about disruption. This is a great yeah. environment of disruption. Open source, uh, I think it's going we're going to see, in my, at least in our history, in my life, uh, I've seen open source really become disruptive, but I think still a whole nother level of disruption is coming around yeah. the open source, you're seeing it here. But I want you to talk about like uh, Amazon, okay? Mm -hmm. A big enabler of cloud. Um, they, they own the developer community in terms of spinning up web servers and whatnot. Um, they have Elastic MapReduce and they announced a deal with MapR. Right. Um, we're trying to figure that out, so help me understand um, what that means. Because yeah. um, Hadoop, one of the big things that we all know about is trying to make it easy to configure. Right. Right. And Amazon's not that easy to work with. Right. Um, I mean, it's easy to work with, right? I'm just saying, but most people know it's a lot of work involved. Yep. Cost of ownership and all that stuff. So, what does that deal mean and what does yeah. Elastic MapReduce? Right. So, I mean, fundamentally, uh, Amazon is infrastructure as a service. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're, for the AWS business, it's about selling infrastructure. And the more uh, of the ecosystem that works on your infrastructure, the better, right? And so, I, you know, I would expect to see them, you know, we've been running CDH on EC2 for uh, literally over three years now. Um, and uh, because as a platform provider, you want to work on all the infrastructure that's out there that people are using. And as an infrastructure provider, you want all of the ecosystem to run uh, to run on your platform. And so that's uh, so I think I think Amazon's going to continue to do. You know, they have their own database. They also just announced that HBase is running on um, on EC2 uh, MapR. So mm -hmm. I think they're you know they're, you're going to try to see Amazon get really the the full suite of everybody. You know, obviously Oracle, Windows. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to try to get all all possible things running on AWS. So I see those kind of new, the new news here as just um, uh, just further reinforcement of that. I was excited by the HBase one because it really, you know, they have the Dynamo um, DB and they they've uh, and Simple DB and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was a real validator for HBase uh, for us. So when right. you see like, oh, the, you know, because there's there's forty thousand uh, NoSQL um, data stores. You know, we really threw a lot of our weight behind HBase because we think it's that's the one that that's going to stick. Mm -hmm. So it was really interesting to see Amazon uh, um, kind of validate that as well. Uh, and I think they'll continue to do that. I think you know, I think we'll see other. Uh, I think we'll see more platform technologies um, being offered on on top of Amazon. Mm -hmm. So just in terms of uh, you know the cloud is a viable way to deploy and yeah. take advantage of big data. I mean, we're, you know, we, we talk a lot about uh, uh, the Fortune 50 uh, looking into big data, you know, running a cloud era. What about some of the smaller the SMB market? And mm -hmm. you know, a lot, sometimes you know the amount of data you might have or want to work with isn't mm -hmm. necessarily uh, related to how big your company is in terms of headcount or mm -hmm. revenue. So uh, how do smaller companies uh, kind of leverage big data, leverage Hadoop? And is the cloud really kind of the answer to that equation? Uh, it helps, yeah. I think there's there's uh, two interesting themes of the cloud. One is that um, there's all the cloud, uh, all this running this infrastructure as a service and mm -hmm. uh, cloud providers enabling their uh, infrastructure cost and scale that lets people of waste of pretty much any size uh, consume it. Um, the other is that we're taking a bunch of cloud technology and enabling people who have their own computers or their own data centers mm -hmm. to operate them more like the cloud. Right. And so there's these two threads going in parallel where you know if you look at how someone who's say running HBase themselves, they're not running it that differently than say someone who's running in the cloud. And these, mm -hmm. these technologies were fundamentally designed for the cloud and so Right. Uh, people are, your on-prem is getting more and more cloud-like, and then uh, similarly, the cloud infrastructure is getting more and more accessible. Mm -hmm. And both of those, I think, enable uh, you know SMBs, uh, uh, anyone at large, mm -hmm. to kind of gain access to that technology. So I see those as two kind of, those are the two interesting complementary threads with, with cloud. Okay, Eli Collins with Cloudera, um, early employee at Cloudera, congratulations on all your success. You guys got Thank CDH4. You going, um, to the H5's coming around the corner, you were yeah. talking to me, that's your new, your new release is coming. Yeah, we're, we're, oh, we're oh, you're working, working on, on it, coming. exactly, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, we, one year uh, release uh, cycle? Yeah, we so do, we do major yeah. releases every year, and then we do quarterly updates. Um, so we're still, you know, CDH3, which is, you know, the Hadoop 1.x yep. uh, series, we're still pushing on that one, just launched CDH4, 
we'll do quarterly updates of that. Now we're going to start working on CH5, which will be the next major, uh, next major version. We love using sports analogies. We call this the NASCAR race. So now Hortonworks has got their car on the track uh, with their data platform. Looks good. They've like, got H catalog, some interesting features. Um, mm -hmm all kind of going in the right direction. We talked to Doug Cutting about Avro. Mm -hmm. um, just great development, congratulations. You guys are good citizens and leading the way. Um, Thank you. Cloudera's uh, helped create industry and uh, really successful, so thanks for all your support. We'll be right back with our next guest after this uh, short break. <laughs>